Revolution is a sudden momentum for change. It is from a place of dissatisfaction and a desire for improvement and total change. The change Nigeria has always yearned for has been on long before now. The protests in Nigeria so far has evolved around bad government, corruption, public fund embezzlement, and most recently, police brutality. The year 1966 was remarkable as a 12 days revolution was declared by Major Isaac Adakoboro, an Ijor nationalist. In the early years of Nigeria's independence from Britain, Isaac Boro was in the forefront of the campaign for minority. He formed an armed military Niger Delta volunteer force to demand for a share of proceeds from oil wealth for his people. The confrontation between NDVF and the Nigerian forces led to the death of over 150 people. The armed military led by Boro was overpowered by the Nigerian force, while Boro and Samuel Owonaro, who was the chief of staff of the Nigerian Delta Volunteer Force and other leaders of the military group, were arrested and charged for treason. When they appeared before Justice Phil Egbose of the Port Harcourt Court, they were sentenced to death, but the sentence was commuted to life imprisonment. At the outbreak of the Nigerian Civil War in May 1967, Borrow and his comrades were pardoned and enlisted to fight the war on the Nigerian side. He was killed on the 9th of May 1968 near Okrika River State. In 1989, there was a protest movement ignited by the masses' anger against corruption in government through the International Monetary Fund IMF. Handbills were circulated by student activists alleging large-scale theft of public funds and stalking of these funds abroad by the then head of state, General Babangdar IBB, and his deputy. After the August 1986 coup d'etat, IBB organized a national debate over the IMF loans and consequent conditionalities. The cumulative answer from the debate was in objection to the IMF, but the head of state at the time claimed to have heard the voices of the people. The Structural Adjustment Program SAP was then introduced on the claims of reformation, but was still the same IMF World Bank policy of free markets, capitalism, and this prompted reactions from the people. There was nationwide protest and agitation by the masses. In Patakot, there were first confrontations between the youths and heavy armed police officers and soldiers during the protest. The crowds burned down a savings bank, a state-owned newspaper, and heavily damaged the headquarters of a large palm oil installation. All these occurred after several days of unrest in Lagos, the then Nigerian capital, where several thousand people rioted and set buildings and automobiles ablaze to protest against hardship that they attributed to former President Ibrahim Babangida's economic measures. Some of the protesters reportedly carried placards with General Babangida's picture 
and distributed leaflets accusing him and members of his military installed government of corruption. In the cause of these chaotic events, the police reportedly fired at protesters in Benin City, a major center east of Lagos and about halfway to Port Harcourt. This brings to mind the annulment of elections between Chief MKO Abdullah, a Yoruba Muslim multi-millionaire on the political platform of SDP, and Alaji Bashir Tofa of NRC in the June 12, 1993 presidential election. To say the Nigerians were jolted by his actions would be an understatement. Nigeria was on a revolt following the cancellation of presidential the election, election, which was judged was the freest and free fairest in political annals. The Pan-African News Agency at the time reported soldiers killed several rioters who set a truck on fire in Ikui, a well-to-do neighborhood in Lagos. The agency set up by the Organization of African Unity quoted witnesses as saying the troops piled bodies into the back of a truck and drove away. It was reported that protesters built barricades of buses and tires and set them on fire, sealing the central business district. They blocked three bridges leading from the city's residential island to the business center and attacked few shops that were opened. Looters started away televisions and stereos on their head. The main bridge leading from the international airport also was barricaded and some domestic flights were turned away. Twenty-seven years later, the Nigerian youths again see a reason not to be silent. A chance to speak up and embark on a peaceful protest against police brutality and the total disembarment of the special anti robbery board SARS. They also demanded a reform in the Nigerian police force. This time, the social media served as a tool in the course of this protest, with the use of the hashtag such as hashtag NBADGovernment, hashtag NSARS, and hashtag and police brutality on all social media platforms alongside pictures and video content. The protest went viral like fire, getting the attention of the world. Unfortunately, what started out as a peaceful demonstration by thousands of youths degenerated into chaos after some peaceful and unarmed protesters were arrested, shot dead, and injured. It was reported that shootings occurred at Lekki Toll Gate in Lagos by the Nigerian army. It would seem that the same approach the government in 1993 applied to its citizens who protested were once again applied. This cruel act caught the attention of international bodies including CNN, top celebrities and the world at large. One would wonder, after the protest, what next? How many more protests before there is a better Nigeria? These protests so far in Nigeria revolve around one thing. Same message, different voices and different times. A better Nigeria in government, structure and all sectors.